Hi, I'm Matthias. I'm the creator of Stitch Buddy, an editor for machine embroidery designs. And in this video is the first one of a sequence where I will show you a new feature which is introduced with the upcoming version, Stitch Buddy 3.0. Um, the new feature is adding shapes to existing or new designs. A shape could be an easy drawing or, for example, knockdown stitches you'd like to add under a monogram. And um, in this video, I will focus on the first part, which is defining the shape, uh, which is done by drawing or creating paths. Um, the second one will focus on creating the stitches themselves, and the third one will address some, some well, advanced topics of that. So let's start here with the um, welcome design. I save it under a different name, or I already have saved it under a different name, which is Demo. Um, and I would like to add a simple flower to this design. Um, therefore, I use the add shape functionality, which is located in the toolbar, or you can find it in the design menu as well. So, and what I first like to do is add a stem. The flower should have a stem and two blossoms and some leaves. And the stem is just a single line which is slightly curved. So I start here with the drawing tool, um, clicking for the starting point, and then um, clicking again to set an anchor point for the straight line. And if I'm moving my mouse on, I will have the second part of this curve or of this um, line here, which should be a curve. So I'm pressing the option key, which changes my current line this segment to a curve. And I will add a third one as well um, and end the stem here by double clicking. So that's the first part of the flower stem. Um, I'd like to have a second part there. Again, I start by clicking the mouse and just drawing a straight line ending it directly by double click, which looks a little bit, well, strange for a flower, I think. So this should be more likely a curve. Um, let's, let's just zoom a little bit in so it's easier to see what I'm doing. Um, I'm right clicking on this line and I have a context menu with some options. One of them is convert to curve. And when I have a curve, there are two additional points added to the segment, which are control points. As you can already see for the existing stem, these control points are um, controlling the, the slope, the curve, um, and I can just drag and drop them by selecting a different tool here, which is the Adjust tool. And as you can see, you might know this by other vector graphic programs. I can just adjust the, the curveness here by dragging control points. Um, that's already the stem for the flower. Um, as I mentioned, it should also have bosoms, blossoms. Sorry for that. Um, of course, there are a couple multiple options to create this shape. I could draw it um, from scratch as I just did. Now I'm I'm using a different pre um, predefined form, which is an oval. And just by clicking, holding the mouse key, and dragging my mouse, I'm creating an oval. And again, I, I'm using the context menu here to change the bottom curve into a straight line. And now I'm acting. I'm adding additional anchor points to this line. One in the middle, also again by right clicking and using the context menu, and two additional ones as well. And now, just by drag and dropping, again changing the tool here, by drag and dropping these anchor points, I can create a small blossom for my flower. Um, so, um, of course, it needs to be moved to um, be aligned to the stem. Um, I could drag and drop, but then the whole drawing would be moved. 
if I hold down the option key, only this part, this called subpath, is moved with my mouse. And if I simultaneously holding the command key, I can even rotate it. So now I can just align my blossom to the stem. Um, of course, there needs to be a second one, and I don't want to create it again, so I'm just using the already created one by copying this part of the design, only the sub pair, pasting it in. And again, holding the um, option key, I'm moving the sub path to its correct position, and by simultaneously holding the command key, I'm rotating it as well. So here is my second blossom located. Okay, that looks already similar to a floral at least, um, which should have two leaves as well. And again, just to show you some of the options you have, I'm using a predefined shape here, which is a rectangle to create a leaf. Again, click and hold the mouse, drag it to create a rectangle. I could hold the shift key to force it into a square. The same holds true for the oval, but by holding the shift key would be a circle, um, but that's not important at the moment. And now I'm changing again back to my modification tool and converting the left and the right side into curves. Doesn't look like a leaf at all, at least not so far. Now I'm removing this anchor point here. As you can see, it might slightly become similar to a to leaf and now dragging anchor points like I want to do. Um, a leaf should have a peak here, a little bit more pointy. Um, so I use the control points and if I'm dragging and dropping a control point, you can see that its corresponding one is always moved with these control points. But if I'm holding the option key, I can change this individual one, making a peak. And again, you already know this, moving the subpath, holding the Alt key, rotating it with the Command key until it's located as I would like to have it. So that was, well, converting a rectangle into something which is at least similar to a leaf. And now, last but not least, I will use the draw feature again for a second leaf, just to give you some other options there. Um, by holding directly the option key, the first segment will already be a curve. You can see it with the two control points. Nevertheless, they are not banded yet. And I will add a second one here and double click to create this shape here. Um, again, using the modification tool to give the curve a bending. Holding the um, option key to create a peak here. And now that looks a little bit like a leaf, something like that. Um, as you can see, this is a sub path as well, which is not closed, um, indicated here by these anchor points. And I, later on, I would like to fill the leaf with stitches and to fill a shape, it is required that the sub path is closed. So I can use, again, the context menu, close the sub path. Um, a different option is if I'm drawing a, a path and um, ending it by double click, I could hold the shift key and automatically close the sub path when ending my drawing. So now again, I will move this a little bit, holding the um, option key here, maybe making the leaf a little bit bigger for later on. Um, so this may be as well, just giving it some more volume to be filled with stitches. Okay, so 
now I've created a shape which should be a, a flower and I will work on the shape in the next video to fill it and to add stitches um, at its outline and it's a good it's a good moment at the moment to save this shape into a file so I can reuse it I can edit it later on or can add it to different um, the, um, designs so I'm using here in my um, add shape when you save button I rename it like flower add it to my desktop for later use um there are a lot of options here um, i i used a couple of modification keys i used different options to create these shapes using predefined um, selections or by drawing paths i i know that's hard to remember so if you are in doubt use this question mark button here in the shape um, dialog window it will bring you to Stitch Buddy's in-app help, and there is a specific chapter which um, def um, de describes in detail how shapes are defined, what options keys are available, and just what you can do to create a shape you would like to fill or outline with stitches. Well, let's end this video. As mentioned, uh, there will be next one where we will fill and outline the shape with stitches and the third one with more advanced topics so stay tuned